Starks was the little guy that the crowd related to. A standing ovation, welcoming back John Stark. He was just fearless. Starks for three. We see me be always a guy making that pivotal play and, and flaunting it, dancing off the court, tantalizing guys up in their face, you know, always making the threes, pulling the shirt. So he was very animated on the court, very provocative type of player. Came to the game prepared to win at all costs. And that's what my whole mindset. I'm gonna go in there and play like a tiger. I'm gonna do everything I can out there on the court to help this team win, whether it's diving for balls, doing whatever. John Starks battled his way into the NBA, despite tremendous odds in 1988. But he was cut by the Warriors after just one season and found himself in basketball's minor leagues. I said, eventually my time gonna come again, and when it do, I'm gonna be ready. From his earliest days in a Nick uniform, he set out to prove he belonged. My first game, I was so hyped. People said, was you scared? I said, no, because I had played Michael over in my mind so many times. I had played him one-on-one. -on -one. Starks comes in, and John Starks is a player they activated yesterday. He looked at me. He like, before the night is over, you're going to be calling me Mr. Jordan. Stops the dribble, plays it into Jordan. Starks steals the ball, falls out of bounds. Jackson on the drive ahead to Starks. He lays it up. Good. John Starks, first two points. I end up, you know, playing well that game. And after the game, I walked up to him. I said, he's not getting Mr. Jordan out of me tonight. My confidence level just shot up. By the next, off the steal, Starks. Whoa! To be able to be a contributor to the team's success, it was a dream world in, in a sense. Starks had finally found a home. In his second season in New York, he thrived under a new coach and a style of play that suited him perfectly. The 90 team under Riley was physical. The Oakman, Ewing, Starks was the guy out front. Here's John Starks. When Coach Riley came, he put a lot on my shoulders. We had the persona, team-wise, of a nasty physical team, and that's exactly what John Starks was. It's a flagrant two. His headbutt of Reggie Miller in the playoffs was inopportune, but again, you can't separate the bad from the good with people. You have to accept it all. And the overall package of John Starks was uh, unquestionably positive. Starks had already become a fan favorite in New York. In the spring of 1993, he became a legend. And the net lead remains at three. We're down to 50 seconds left in the fourth quarter. I saw B.J. Armstrong every time I shift my eyes and he knew a pick was coming from Patrick. He would jump to my high side. John Starks breaks loose at the um, 7th Avenue end of the garden. <laughs> I'm like, you got to go in strong. And I just jumped as hard as I could. Starks, yes! What a move by Starks, who was able to sky. I've been in the garden a lot of times. I don't know if I've ever heard a louder roar than that night. Well, that's one poster shot that I got as a famous shot. In 94, the Knicks were a serious contender for a championship. I think he was ready and uh, showed that he was ready. Starks, now among the game's elite, was named to the 1994 Eastern Conference All-Star team. Starks for three, and a big tray it is for John Starks with nine. It was like a combination of all the work that I put into it and the dreams that I had. As the season continued, Starks' focus shifted to the playoffs. But just one month before the postseason was set to begin, he suffered a severe knee injury in Atlanta. When I tore my knee up in 94 against Atlanta, I can remember the doctors told me if I can be back in six weeks. I said, I'm gonna be back before then. I was convinced that I was gonna be back for the playoff. A standing ovation. Welcoming back John Starks. He always came back earlier 
than expected. So I wasn't surprised when he did make it back. It took him a little while to get back in the groove, and then he really had a very good playoff run. John Starks drives to the baseline, lets it go! John Starks is back! Clean up, Starks for three, yes! They mirrored us in a lot of ways. Uh, they try to play defense, they try to be physical. John Starks and Reggie, it was a battle. Here's Starks, John Starks with the turn to do it! Emboldened by a dramatic win over Indiana, Starks and the Knicks jumped out to a three games to two advantage over the Houston Rockets in the 1994 NBA Finals. Oh man, I was having a great, great series. In game six, the Knicks were down, I think double figures in the second half, and they had put on a, a furious comeback. Starks for three, yes. John Starks, Starks unleashing. Stark's fourth quarter heroics put the Knicks on the brink of a championship. I would not be surprised to see John Starks take a three-point shot here. John's got the ball, and he's got the option to drive to the hole with Patrick as a trailer or shoot outside. Akeem was guarding Patrick, and I came off and I did a step back. And I thought I had cleared him. Rockets do not want to foul. Sparks for three. That shot felt so good. I just knew it was money. And he just got his fingertips on it. Came up short. The game is over. And it will go to a seventh and decisive game on Wednesday. It's a matter of uh, us coming out and proving to uh, everybody else, we're proving to ourselves that uh, we're a much better team than Houston. Welcome to the summit. Me, when I have to think about something too long and you want it so bad, you don't go out there and play a relaxed game. Here's Starks. Oh. Rockets with a one point lead. Here's Starks. I think I was just rushing more so than anything, you know. Um, just too quick on my release. Starks again for three. It was torture. It was torture <laughs> watching John die, you know, uh, with, his, with his shooting. Here's Starks. Oh, it definitely was a nightmare because you dream about playing in these type of games. It just didn't happen for me that particular night. There was no point in the game where guys was telling me, stop shooting the ball. You know what I mean? Because they know my MO. They know one shot can get me going real quick. John Starks having another good look, and this thing falls about five feet short as nobody appeared to hit his arm. And then it's just been unbelievable. That was who he was. He he always remained confident no matter what he was shooting. He thought he was hot and he would get hot. Everybody sacrificed to end the season, you know, hopefully with a championship, but we, we came up short. Every now and then I have a guy who come up, John, game seven. It's always going to be linked to me. Anyone that was with that team that whole season knows John Starks didn't have the year he had. The Knicks don't even get close to playing in Houston in the third week in June. Here's Houston. Three. Yes. When Allen first came here, I felt that it was an opportunity for us to, you know, get to the championship because I knew that he was a great scorer from playing against him. And so I wanted to uh, welcome open arms. It broke the ice between us, you know, we're good friends to this day. His attitude was, I'm gonna go out and be the sixth man of the year, which he was. What that shows people is that the unselfishness uh, that you had to have in order to, you know, play at this level at times. Though no longer with the team, his place in the hearts of Knicks fans was unmistakable when he returned to the Garden to watch a playoff game in 1999. I'm sitting up there watching it in the tunnel, and all of a sudden the camera panned on me, and the crowd just erupted. The emotions that was going, it took everything to hold back the tears. You know, you could see it in my eyes, I was watering up. That right there showed me that they appreciated what I brought to the table. You know, success comes with a vision. I wanted to be a professional basketball player at a young age. Obviously, my route was a lot different than any 
other player that came through here. But that vision was there, and I was steady, even though I was going through all my trials and tribulations. Basketball was my driving force in keeping me focused. These days, Starks is back home at Madison Square Garden, working in alumni relations and fan development. I love what I do. I love to be out mingling amongst people. He's supposed to be in the garden. I mean, he's a Nick. People will always welcome him because he was a reflection of, of New York, of the fans. You know, come from, he, he came from working his butt off. You know, whenever you can inspire people to do their best in life, you know, that's what it's all about.